The topic of this video is material usage, mix and yield variances. The term variance means difference. So in this video we are going to talk about what happens when you use more than required material, what happens when you don't use the material in the proportion you were supposed to and what happens to the output once you don't use the material in the proportion you were supposed to. I am the Commerce Specialist. Welcome to my channel where you will find videos covering learning outcomes of various academic qualifications and professional certifications including life-changing business ideas and hacks. So without a further ado, let's jump into the topic material usage, mix and yield variances. Actually when we calculate material usage variance that is further divided and explained through mix and yield variances. So we need to understand what is material usage variance. Usage variance means if you were supposed to use X quantity of material, you ended up using Y quantity of material. So the difference will be known as material usage variance. Once you calculate material usage variance, it can be further explained by calculating sub variances, which is mix and yield. Material mix variance occurs when the materials are not mixed or blended in the standard proportion. It is also a measure to see whether the actual proportions are more expensive or cheaper than the standard proportion. Material yield variances arises because there is a difference between what should have been the input and what is the actual input looking at the output. In other words, we are using X amount of input whereas we were supposed to use Y amount of input for the same output. So all these we will understand when I will explain a numerical example. So here we have a question. It says uh, Delta company uses two different materials which is F and B to make one unit of product X. The standard material usage and cost for one unit of product X are as follows. So in order to make one unit of product X, you are going to use 5 kilograms of material F and 10 kilograms of material B. Each kilogram of material F cost you $2 and each kilogram of material B cost you $3. So when you multiply 5 into 2 will give you $10 and 10 into 3 will give you 30. In other words, one unit of product X will require total 15 kilograms and it will cost you in terms of material $40. Now understand these are standard quantities which means ideally you should be using 5 kilograms of material F and 10 kilograms of material B in order to make one unit. Now this is very important remember these information is for one unit. In reality actual production was 80 units and we ended up using 600 kg of material F and 700 kilograms of material B and we are asked to calculate material usage mix and yield variances. So first of all I'm going to calculate material usage variance and let's see how it is calculated and what does it mean. So the formula is very simple it's standard quantity or you can call it usage minus actual quantity into standard rate per kilogram. So when I say standard please note we are talking about material F at the moment for one unit 5 kilograms are required. So in reality you made 80 units you manufactured 80 units. So 5 aids are 40 that means 400 kilograms should have been used for material F that is the standard quantity. So in order to make one unit of product X if 10 kilograms of material B should have been used so for 80 it should be 10 into 80 which is 800. I repeat whenever standard quantities are to be calculated what you have to do is see how much it is for one unit. Like for one unit of product X you need 5 kilograms. That is the standard quantity for one and then you multiply it by the actual production. So if 5 kilograms are required for one unit how many kilograms are required for 80 that is the standard quantity. So 5 into 80 will give you the standard quantity. 
10 kilograms of material B is required to make one unit of product X. So for 80 units of product X, how many kilograms of material B is required? 80 into 10, which is 800. So I'm just going to total this. This is 1200. Actual quantity is given here. 80 units of product X were made using 600 kilograms of product F and 750 of B. So actual quantity is 600 kilograms of product X and 750 of product B, which adds up to 1350 kilograms. So obviously 400 minus 600 will give us minus 200. And 800 minus 70 will give us positive 50. Then you multiply by standard rate per kilogram, which is here, $2. So into $2. And this is $3 into $3. So you get 200 into 2 is minus 400. And 50 into 3 is positive 150. Now obviously plus minus sign of the greater number is 300 minus minus is actually adverse or you can call it unfavorable now what is the what is the science behind favorable and unfavorable variance it is pretty simple look for making 80 units of product x you were supposed to standard means you were supposed to use 400 kilograms of material f but you used more. So if you're using more, that means it's going to cost you more. You're going out of budget. And for 80 units of product X, you were supposed to use 800 kilograms, but you saved up. You used only 750. So, so if your standard is less and actual is more, you're getting minus. Minus means adverse. Adverse means unfavorable variance. If your standard is more, actual is less, that means you staved up. So your positive amount is known as a favorable variance. So plus minus minus sign of the greater, it is an adverse variance. In other words, we can sum it up that to make 80 units of product X, actually you were supposed to use a total of 1200 kilograms of raw material, both F and B but you ended up using 1350 kilograms. So obviously you used more and it cost you more. Now the next step is to further study this variance, which is material. This three, uh, 300 adverse is actually your material quantity variance, or you can call it material usage variance. Now this usage variance is further explained by material mix variance and materials yield variance. Now I'm going to calculate material mix variance and you know material mix variance arises when the materials are not used in the proportion they were supposed to. So let's see how it is calculated. For mix variance, you have to write here actual quantity standard mix. And this is actual quantity actual mix. Now what is the meaning of this? When it says actual quantity, we have two raw materials. F and B. So we understand the question told us that for making 80 units, actually we ended up using 600 kilogram of F and 750 of B. So 600 kilogram of F and 750 of B. So this is your actual quantity. So actual quantity is actually 1350 kilograms. Now what we are looking at, okay, actual quantity is this, but if we still had followed the standard mix, standard mix, the standard proportion. Now, if you look at this standard proportion, so I'm just writing it here for your understanding. We are writing F ratio B. F is 5 and B is 10 kilograms. So this is 5 ones are 5, 5 to the 10. So your standard mix, standard mix, or standard proportion is 1 is to 2 and the sum of ratio 1 plus 2 is 3 which means F should be 1 upon 3 and B should be 2 upon 3 actually so the same ratio if I follow here F should be had it been standard mix means the standard proportion 
so it should be one third and b should be two third one third and two third of what this amount of one three five zero so when i calculate one third of one three five zero i get calculate one third of one three five zero i get four hundred and fifty kilograms and two third of one three five zero this amount is nine hundred kilograms which means yes in reality we have used 1350 kilograms but had we used this 1350 total material in the standard prescribed mix prescribed proportion or the recipe so it should have been 450 kilograms of f and b 900 in the original recipe original mix or original blend but actually we used 60750 but actual quantity, actual mix, obviously actual quantity is 1350 kilograms, same, but actually we use 6750, which is given in the question here. Actually we use 6750 kilograms. Means total 1350 kilograms you have used in this proportion. Actually, had you followed the original recipe, it should have been this much. So, into standard rate per kilogram. So, when you minus 450 minus 600, you will give 150 kilograms, which is minus, and 900 minus 750 is also 150, but it is positive. Into standard rate is 2 and 3 dollars, into 2 and 3. So, you will get here 300. And you get here 450 here again if you look at you're using more than what you were supposed to you were supposed to use in the standard proportion 450 but you use 600 therefore this is an adverse variance a is for adverse you were supposed to use 900 but you end up using less so this is your favorable variance so total your mix variance comes to 150 favorable sign of the greater number so what does this mean this means though you used it in wrong proportion still you saved up your actual mix this is your actual mix it should have been like this but actually whatever the mix you have used it has saved some money for you which is 150 dollars the next variance is yield variance yield variance shows the output to get a required output what was the required input but actually what was the input you have used so there are two ways of calculating yield variance i'm going to share both the methods with you and then i'll tell you which is my favorite and which looks more rational so let's look at the first method of calculating yield variance so in the first method if you need to calculate yield variance we need to calculate weighted average cost which is pretty simple so here i'm talking about material yield variance The first thing we need to calculate here is weighted average cost per kilogram. Now this weighted average cost is very simple. See, for one unit of product X, you are spending 40 on material. And how many kilograms are there? 15. So you just divide $40 by 15 kilograms. So you will get the weighted average cost as 2.67 dollars per kilogram the next step is to write the formula the formula is pretty simple standard quantity minus actual quantity into weighted average price per kilogram so standard quantity please understand we need to look at how much is it for one multiply by the actual production so for one unit we need 15 kilograms and for 80, 15 into 80, we'll get 1200 kilograms. And the actual quantity is given here, 600 and 750. You can take this, you can take this, you can take this. It's all the actual quantity, 1350 kilograms. Into weighted average cost per kilogram, which we have calculated here, 2.67 per kilogram. 
and obviously when you minus you get minus 150 into 2.67 per kilogram finally you will get 400 because this is minus you will get adverse variance and why it is adverse for making 80 units you were supposed to use on an average 1200 kilograms but you ended up using 1350 so if you're using more than required it has to be an adverse variance means unfavorable you are losing money alternatively this yield variance will make more sense if we calculate it this way so calculating yield variance in a different way uh, this is my favorite and it makes more sense so what we need to understand is how many kilograms of both the material were used so 600 kilogram of F and 750 of B that makes a total of 1350 kilograms so if you're using 1350 kilograms and to make one unit only 15 kilograms is required so in 1000 so in 1350 kilograms how many units could have been made so I am writing here standard output as per actual quantity. So your standard output should have been if you are using 1350 kilograms and for one unit you require only 15 kilograms. So that means you should have made 90 units less actual production actual production is told to you that you have made only 80 units so you left with 10 units what does this mean if you're using 1350 kilograms of material you should have made 90 units you're using 1350 instead of making 90 units you're making only 80 units so this is not right this is not desirable that's why this 10 is taken as negative although 90 minus 80 is 10 positive 10 but technically by using this much material 1350 kilograms you should have made 90 units but you ended up making less which means your input is more but the output is less it should have been 90 but it is only 80 so you're making 10 less units and each unit has a standard cost of 40 so if you multiply it by 40 dollars you're getting 400 adverse variance which is also here now as I told you once you've calculated material usage variance it is explained further into mix and yield your mix variance is coming to 150 favorable 150 favorable and your yield variance is coming minus 400 adverse so favorable is plus adverse is minus so 400 minus 150 is 300 and that is what is given here as material usage variance so if you have any question relating to mixed yield and usage variance please feel free to leave a comment i have also created a video on material and labor variances and overhead variances if you have time please watch them it will further enhance your understanding relating to variances so if you are not yet subscribed to my channel please subscribe to my channel press the bell notification button so that you get my videos on a timely basis if you like this video please share it with your dear and near ones so that others can also benefit thank you so very much for your precious time love you all Thank <laughs> you.